Welcome back to our video series. I'm Associate Executive Director Marie Stephenson, joined by Executive Director Dr. Paul Kramer, and we've got some exciting updates for you. That's right, Marie. First up, we're thrilled to announce that the State Charter School Board has approved and is nearly done making some minor edits to the charter agreement. This is going to be hot off the press very soon. Do we dare say that this is going to be the best version of the charter agreement yet? I think we do, Dr. Kramer, and let me tell you why. As our portfolio has grown and changed over the years, we have learned a lot as an authorizer. However, trying to capture that learning in multiple versions of the charter agreement has ultimately led to some confusion and mixed messages of accountability. And all of it was very authorizer-driven, rather than focusing on the bilateral nature of the charter agreement between the school and the authorizer. And so, this last legislative session, a fantastic group of advocates from schools, the Charter Association, the Charter Network, and our board were able to work closely together with the legislator to clean up charter legislation, which helps to direct what belongs in your charter agreement. Then staff, working alongside our assistant attorney generals, board members, and stakeholders like you, were able to incorporate feedback, learning, and best practices to produce an updated, easier to read and understand bilateral charter agreement. Our plan is to have this template in place for a minimum of three years, so you don't have to worry about another version or update coming out anytime soon. But of course, the substance of your agreement is bilateral. So if you need to make changes there, you will certainly have options. And I think you'll also be happy with the increased flexibility you now have. Honestly, this is great news for everyone. And there's also some other good news you forgot. And that as a sports guy, there are a few days quite as exciting as signing day. And our board has expressed a desire that we bring that same level of excitement and joy to the charter agreements. So as you begin to consider when your school is ready to embrace the updated version, just know a signing day party is in your future. Oh, I can hardly wait. Uh, but while we're speaking of waiting, we're happy to share that the wait for startup funding updates is also over. With the help and support of the Utah State Board of Education, we've been able to make needed changes to the board role that allows us to now fund not only new and satellite schools, but also school expansion. Additionally, our board was able to approve increases to startup funding amounts, which is another win for schools. And with those changes to board rule, we are also introducing an innovative grant initiative. We're thrilled to have additional options within startup funding to invest in innovative educational ideas that need an initial boost to get off the ground. And we invited our very own innovation and growth specialist, Amy Pace, to tell you more. Hi, Paul and Marie. I am so excited to be here today with you to talk about the Innovation Grant. This funding opportunity has been shared with our charter leaders in a variety of ways, by email, across several social media accounts, and at the recent UAPCS conference. This grant aims to enhance instructional practices, provide professional learning opportunities, and promote student engagement. I am thrilled to report that there are many innovative and interesting proposals being submitted already. I anticipate viewing, reviewing the first round of applications during the second week of July with the grant team so that we can even notify recipients about these projects and they can roll out before the coming school year. If you haven't already applied, I hope that you will consider doing that. It has been so rewarding and fun to chat with our school leaders as I've worked with people to complete this opportunity. We can't wait to see more of the incredible, innovative things happening around our state. Charter schools truly are transformational. Well, and since you mentioned transformation, you know, I just have to give a quick shout out to our new school proposals. If you've got a vision for a school that can make a difference, we want to hear from you. All proposals are due June 30th, so the deadline's coming up fast. And for those of you, uh, that are already making a difference, we're also accepting small school expansion applications. They are due July 1st. And just to be sure that we're all on the same page, a small expansion is up for up to 100 students or the addition of one grade level or both of those things. However, if you are seeking to add more than 100 students or more than one grade, you're going to be looking at a large school expansion. 
That is right, Dr. Kramer. Uh, we should also clarify that a school should use the small expansion as more of a release valve and not plan to apply multiple years in a row for a small expansion. If they need multiples, they will need to apply for a large expansion. So looking ahead, large school expansion and satellite applications are both due when? November 1st. Great. Thank you. And now, isn't it true that the large expansion and satellite application are more rigorous than the small expansion application? Why would that be the case? Well, Dr. Kramer, it all comes back to both board rule and the goal of bringing quality education to as many students as possible. The small expansion is an easier process seen as a release valve for both something such as an overflowing waiting list or a chance to try something different to address perhaps a declining enrollment. Uh, maybe a school realized that their enrollment configuration is off from what their district is doing, so they're going to try adding a grade to see if more students will end up choosing to stay for an additional year. It's a small solution while exploring options. The large expansion and satellite are truly meant to replicate the best of the best and bring more of what is working well to more of Utah students. It makes so much sense, and I'm excited to see who applies and what lies ahead for Utah's diverse and dynamic education landscape. Me too, Dr. Kramer. And last but certainly not least, we want to update you that we are making great strides with our updated charter school performance frameworks ensuring that we have diverse and holistic ways to look at the schools we authorize. These frameworks will allow Utah's charter schools to fulfill one of their statutory purposes, which is establishing new forms of accountability that emphasize unique performance measures and innovative measurement tools to measure education outcomes. Some of the framework groups are already gathering stakeholder feedback, and some will be soon. And of course, everything will be posted in the next few months for public comment, as is another statutory requirement that we as an authorizer fulfill. So stay tuned, get involved, and let's make education better together. We couldn't do what we do without you.